Hello, I'm Yalda Hakim and you're watching Impact on BBC World News, our top story. Can Iraqi forces win back Anbar province from the so-called Islamic State? And charged with espionage, a correspondent from the Washington Post newspaper goes on trial in Iran. It's all coming up here on Impact. The fight for Iraq's western province of Anbar has entered a new phase. State-run TV has announced the Iraqi army, backed by Shia and Sunni militias, have launched a wide-ranging attack to liberate the capital after a crushing and embarrassing defeat by so-called Islamic State militants. IS captured Ramadi just over a week ago amid accusations that Iraqi troops had offered little resistance. And in a few minutes, we'll cross live to Baghdad to speak to our correspondent there. And later in the program, we'll be looking at how Jordan is responding to the threat from IS from across the border. Now to the rest of the day's news. Malaysia has begun exhuming bodies suspected to be migrants buried in mass graves near the Thai border. Authorities believe the migrants were held for ransom in jungle camps. Thousands of migrants have left Myanmar and Bangladesh in recent weeks. This really shows how disjointed all these operations are with uh, the militia groups involved, the army uh, not making this announcement. Thanks very much for that update. And you know, as you saw there, the capital Amman is very peaceful. See these beautiful uh, creatures extinct. Dr. Mas, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Now, let's get the latest uh, sports news. Steve Wyeth joins us now. And uh, Steve, thanks very much, Steve. Well, stay with us. Don't go anywhere because in the next edition, we'll be revealing the winner of the BBC Women's Footballer of the Year. Stay with us for that. That was Omar Abdel Razek reporting from Baghdad. Well, the advance of IS across Iraq and Syria has caused people to flee in huge numbers. Many predict the internally displaced won't be able to return home for years, as David Campanali now reports. Now to the rest of the day's news. Malaysia has begun exhuming bodies suspected to be migrants buried in mass graves near the Thai border. Authorities believe the migrants were held for ransom in jungle camps. That well, severe weather of another type has hit the southwest of the United States and northern Mexico. At least 19 people have been killed, most in the Mexican border city of... Let's go to China now. It has in unveiled a new strategy that includes expanding its military powers far beyond its borders. Beijing has been accused of steadily building up its naval power and pursuing territorial claims in the South China Sea. That sparked concern in Washington and other countries, but China has accused them of double standards. Well, the link between this announcement and, and the recent tensions with the US over the South China Sea. Uh, that's right. Um, and, um, well, the white paper is a, is a piece of military doctrine from intervening uh, in any kind of uh, conflict situation uh, along China's coastline. It is it's obviously a threat. Uh, and uh, chi uh, Taiwan has proposed uh, South China... As ...is unlikely to be taken seriously. Is there anything else in this white paper that's newsworthy? Um, World Cup that's kicking off next weekend. But before that, fans from around the world have been voting for the BBC Women's Footballer of the Year award, and we have a winner. Nigeria's Asisat Oshiwala. She received the news in Toronto. Let's take a look. Oshiwala there. Well, the BBC's Sarah Montcurran is at the BBC's Sports Centre in Manchester for us, and uh, she looked very excited there. What makes her stand out and so special? Well, that's it for this edition of Impact. Do join us again tomorrow. In the meantime, you can get in touch with me on Twitter. I'm at BBC Yalda Hakim. See you again at the same time tomorrow.